Hello, everybody. How are ya? Welcome, welcome to the final live stream for 2016. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? We've been streaming on Ustream almost an entire year. I mean, Ustream. Duh. YouTube. I was on Ustream. Now I'm on YouTube. Sometimes I just get my mouth all discombobulated. Has that ever happened to you guys? <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Sherry Spatz. Petka. Hi, Dot. Dorothy. Deborah. Hi, Aunt Beck. And Debbie. Naomi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Marion. Good to see you guys. Hi, Michael Ann Fitzgerald. Nice to see you. How do you, how do you like to be called? Do you like to be called Michael Ann or Michael or what, what do you prefer to be called? I have my handy dandy little list that I actually found. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. <clears throat> Hi, Sarah. Hi, Pekka. Hi, Kate from Holland. Hello. Welcome from Holland. That's great. Hi, Christine. Nice to see you. And Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi, Pin. Boy, great group showing up. Hi, Deborah. <clears throat> Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie's in cold New Jersey. It's cooling off here, too. I'm sure it's colder where you are. Hi, Dawn. Hello, Linda. Just Michael? Okay. All right. I try to make note of things that I think I won't remember. <laughs> Yeah, belated Merry Christmas to you too, Debbie. Hi, Carol. So great to have everybody coming in. And yeah, I don't know what we're going to, well, I think I know what we're going to do, but you never know. Sometimes things get changed around. I had a lot of people last week that commented that they really liked the little collage cards that we did last week. So that was fun. Did you guys enjoy doing that? Hi, Nina from Sweden. Welcome from Sweden. I'm Muriel from Cape Town. Holy cow. Like Cape Town, like South Africa, Cape Town. Like South Africa. It just always blows my mind that we have all these people from around the world that just come into my studio. <laughs> ah. Hi, Linda, Miss Pris. Who else is, did I miss anybody? Hi, Gail. Gail in Michigan. Dawn liked the cards. Cool. Debbie liked the cards. And Sherry Spatz liked the cards. Good. Well, we, would you like to do more of that kind of thing? Would you like to see me do more collage -y kinds of things? I was thinking that at some point we might do a set. Now, it would, I can't get them done in one stream, but I thought we might do like a smaller version of those chakra pieces that I did. I showed a few, probably a few months ago by now. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Michelle. I missed Michelle. Michelle, hey. Hi, Pavla. <clears throat> and Paige. I can't remember if that's what I'm supposed to call you. G.S. Paige. Is it Paige? <clears throat> Hi, Rowesta. Let's see. So, sorry. I'm, I know I'm leaning over, but I'm trying to um, make sure I don't miss anything. If I miss anything... If I miss anything and I miss saying hello to anybody, please make them welcome and know that I just, uh, that I just, I just miss. G. Okay. Okay. G. All right. <sighs> Hi, Lola. Lola's from Spain. Hi, little phantom Mika. Mika is in the Netherlands, I think. Hi, Patty. I miss Patty, too. I'm telling you, you guys got to call me out. <laughs> Just call me out so I get, so I say hello to you. Cause I, hi, Susan. I never mean to miss anybody on purpose, so I always don't, don't hesitate to say, say hi to me. Hey, Lindy. Look, oh, Mika's in Belgium. Sorry. I don't know my geography all that well. I should. I went to school. <laughs> I went to school. 
Roes is from the Netherlands. Okay. Debbie's calling me out. Debbie's always going to call me out. Hi, Lola. Wow. Dorothy says today she got happy mail and birthday cards and a new baby great, great, great nephew. That is what I call a celebration, Dorothy. That is a celebration. You have been properly celebrated. <laughs> happy birthday, happy, happy mail, and happy birth of a new baby. That is great. That's great. How awesome. Linda McAllister, how are you? Haven't seen you for a while. Hey, Josie. Josie Webb. Shelly. <laughs> Best day ever. Debbie Boring says, best day ever. Hi, Ina. Cat. Happy New Year, Cat. I'm just sitting here just watching the people come in and just saying hello because I'm having so much fun doing that. Hi, Tia. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just fun to just sit here and just do that. I, I had to, if Ruth comes in, somebody tell me if Ruth, Ruth comes in because she sent me something, and I want to show you guys, but I want to show you when she's here. So I'm going to put this box from Ruth right there. So if Ruth gets here. Hello, Kate. <laughs> Patty got out of bed for me. <laughs> oh, Linda's bluish. Whew. Linda, we've been missing you. Where have you been? That's right. Where have you been? Oh boy, Sarah's James is going to be five on the second. I can't even believe that. Can't believe that, that he's growing up that fast. I'm telling you. So yeah, um, what I started to say, I got ready to, I mean, you can tell how long it takes me to get ready. My wardrobe never, it seldom ever changes because I never know what kind of awful stuff we're going to get into. <laughs> awful and lovely and fun. So I generally dress about the same way. Although last week I did dress up for you guys. I have to admit, I did dress up. I got out my Santa hat and put on my furry coat, you know, and the whole bit. But do you guys, those of you that are, are old enough to have this happen, do you ever just like wake up one morning and like there's, there's like spots appear on your face or something, you know? This red spot right here, I don't know. Nothing's covering it. I don't know what happened. I think Claus Man must have slapped me in the night. I think Claus Man, we're going to blame him. I think he slapped me in the night. <laughs> uh, where's my 2017 glasses? Well, I have this. Does that help? This is my 2017 glass. <laughs> I look great in the Claus Woman outfit. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lindy likes my shirt. It's a good thing you like my shirt because we see it a lot. The poor thing is so threadbare. I went out the other day, and I don't know that you guys can even see how threadbare this is in the cuff. It's so bad that I've turned the cuffs back because I have literally worn all the fabric off of them. Don't be surprised if you see a new plaid flannel shirt. You know, if I go to the store and they've got them on sale, I might, I just might spring for a new one. It could happen because this one's getting so bad. I went out the other day, forgot to leave the shirt here. And I also went out, the glasses that I wear most of the time at the computer is this pair of lovely red glasses. These are the ones I wear most of the time when I'm at the computer. And, uh, I forgot to change my glasses, forgot to change my shirt, and so I had to go for uh, an appointment, and I'm like, these people are going to think <laughs> that I am, that I'm poor as a church mouse and don't have any fashion sense whatsoever. And it's like, oh, well, if that's what they think, so what? Ah, uh, okay, so what's everybody, hey, CB, good to see you. Murda, Murda Harris. I haven't seen you in like forever. It's so good to have you in the chat. That's wonderful. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Hope you're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, Clausman, we flushed him out, didn't we? He says he did not. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll never tell, will we? <laughs> oh, yeah, if I put on a new shirt. <laughs> 
so great to see you, Murda. Hey, hey, Meg. Oh, good. All's well. Okay. Well, oh, and there's Brenda. Hey, Brenda. I'm just sit all I'm doing so far is just sitting here chatting and, and um, fussing about waking up with red spots on my face. <laughs> so, so I don't know how that happens. I have no idea. You just wake up and you go, well, I thought it'd be gone by now. I mean, I haven't put concealer on it and stuff. Nope, it's just right there for everybody to see, so. Oh, well. So this is one of my Christmas presents. I got a new tankard, as Ian said. Hi, Christine. Um. <clears throat> I should never use flesh and claws man in the same sentence. That's probably true, Debbie. That's probably true. <laughs> Anyway, um, Miriam says it could be worse. It could be green spots. That is very true. So let's not complain, shall we? Um, anyway, this was one of my Christmas gifts. Ian calls these tankards. He does not call them cups. Ian's from the UK. He calls this a tankard. I got three of these for Christmas. They came from our local grocery store, if you can believe that. They were so reasonably priced. So this one is Inspire. One says Imagine, and the other one says Dream. And they're just, they're so pretty. And they were so, let's just be honest, they were inexpensive. It's great. So great. So, yeah. Okay. Hi, Tammy. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anybody else I missed. Anyway, I don't know. If I miss anybody, please make everybody welcome as they come in. Okay, because the chat starts flying. High potential for spillage. <laughs> Debbie, hush, okay? <laughs> I'm going to set it out of the way. Besides that, the technical department is not here, I don't think. Unless he's watching in secret. He was, he was not feeling good yesterday, so I think he might be asleep. We'll put it over there out of the way. Hi, Martha. Hi, not that Martha. <laughs> okay. Hi, Jill. All right. Hi, Muriel. Boy, we got a great group today. I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you so much. Let me just take a moment. I'm just going to gush for a minute. I think I have the best audience in all of streaming. I really do. I think I have the best audience. I think I have the greatest group of people that show up on Fridays. Um, I very rarely, I'm probably going to, you know, put the pox on myself by saying this, but I very rarely get cranky comments. Um, we so seldom ever have anybody in the chat, you know, that is questionable. And I just really appreciate you guys. I really do. I'm so glad that you come. Thank you so much. It does not go unnoticed that you take your time to come and spend here. And um, I just really appreciate it. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming. And to any of you who are members of How to Get Creative, I probably will, you know, tear up because I'm such a sap. But, you know, anyway, to any of you that are members at the website, howtogetcreative.com, I just want to tell you thank you so much for um just being part of the group and spending your time there and and just encouraging the things that, you know, telling me the things that you enjoy and things you like. I really appreciate that. And I'm just, I'm so glad to get to know you better on a more personal basis and so forth. So anyway, yeah, it's been a good, 2016 has been a good year. Um, that every year has challenges. Every year has, you know, its little glitches here and there. 2016 is no exception, but, you know, it's been good. So, oh, thank you guys. Um, okay, hi, Lena. Just saw you were there. So anyway, I'm just really appreciative of the fact that, that you're here. And to everyone who can't be here live, we do broadcast every Tuesday Tuesday. Listen to me. Two and Tuesday. We broadcast every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. I don't know where Tuesday came from. I just blew that out 
of my, you know, semi-cognizant brain at the moment. <laughs> Every Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, that's when we're here live. So anytime you can join us, that would be wonderful. And if you can't and you're watching the recording, I'm just so appreciative of the fact that you take your time to do that. I mean, it's great. On the recordings, you can scrub through it. You can watch it, you know, twice as fast. You know, it's it's a lot of fun to watch it the way you want to watch it. It's also nice when you can be here live because then you can chat with each other. And that's wonderful, too. Okay. Hey, Janice. Sharon says it's 7 p.m. Sharon, where are you? Are you in um, 7 p.m.? You must be. And Miriam, it's 9 p.m. So Sharon's got to be that direction. <laughs> Let's not start on my challenged sense of direction, shall we? <laughs> okay. Um, hi, Judith. Nice to see you here live. So it's 2016 in Holland. I just, I don't know the 24 hour clock well enough to go. Oh, yes. England. Okay. So it's seven o'clock in the UK. Got it. <laughs> that was right. It was that direction. <laughs> yeah. Claus man who was in the chat could could easily give you stories about my direction, my being directionally challenged. Um, if I have a compass in my car, I'm good to go. That it works for me to have a compass in the car because I regulate. I have to stop and think, you know, north, south, east, west. I have to really think about that. It's kind of like left and right. There must be a tad little bit of dyslexia lodged in this brain somewhere. And um, so, yeah, there's been those moments where I'll be talking about north and he'll and he's really good at north and directions and all that and he'll say that is not north that's south or something and I'll go it's the other north okay <laughs> oh hello Elena hello beloved ghost welcome welcome <clears throat> Judith says Last time, got myself in the chat on my tablet. It promptly, promptly cut, off, cut off the stream. Oh, no. That's not good. Mm. There's Ruth. Ruth, we've been, we've been killing time here waiting for you to show up. Hey, Miko. Miko faux show. <laughs> All right. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what Ruth sent to me. I've been waiting for her to come. All right. Here we go. Let me open up the box here. Actually, let me just do it this way. <laughs> Carol says, CB says, she's a left and right gal only. North, south, east, and west are just letters. <laughs> N, S, E, and W are just letters. <sighs> Ruth says, my hubby says I'll be late for my own funeral. Well, in that case, it just doesn't matter. All right, you guys, this arrived on um, Christmas Eve. All right, now I have not packaged them all back up the way she sent. She op sent these, each one packaged in its own little package. And I think there's there's a couple of rows of them. I just want you to get, a, this is not all there is. There's another layer of them below here, okay? So I just want you to kind of get a visual of this. And then I'm going to show them to you. <laughs> these are the most... Um, adorable little things and N.R. Edwards in the chat, that's Ruth sent these to me, okay so let me show them to you up real close see if I can get the other, other stuff out of the way she sent me a quartet there are four of these. So there is a quartet and a choir. So it's the quartet and the choir of 2016. 
And I want you to notice that she put her initials and a date on the back because I have had a real hard time getting her, encouraging her, to sign and date her work. And she did every single one of them. Every single one. They are impeccably created. Absolutely impeccably created. So there's four, there's a quartet of the purple ones. And then the choir is, you know, as you would expect, is slightly smaller uh, because they're the backup, the backup singers and their hair pieces are different. They are, I mean, I can't even conceive of how long it took her to do these. <laughs> I really can't. They are um, absolutely adorable. So there were four of these and 20, 20, count them, of the backup angels singers yes I'm not kidding you I'm not kidding so you need to just we'll just take a real good look at this one so if you have any questions about how she did these or anything about it she is in the chat her name is NR Edwards in the chat she is Ruth and so you guys need to just chat with her and ask her pick her brain <coughs> and ask her Hey, Jan, um, and ask her all kinds of questions because she can answer them. <coughs> Excuse me, I need a little drink. I'm telling you, I was absolutely speechless. So here's the choir, the choir girls. I was sitting at Barnes & Noble. Claus Mann and I had gone specifically to the over to the mall on Christmas Eve. Because uh, she told me this was was headed my direction, this box. And so we went over to and picked it up. And then we walked down to, because the post office was closing early that day. So then we walked down to Barnes & Noble and had a cup of coffee. And why? So, well, Claus Mann says, well, are you going to open the package? I said, well, yes. And I opened the package. And there are not very many times in my life that I am completely speechless. But Ruth rendered me speechless on this one. Totally speechless. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. They are adorable. Absolutely adorable. And Ruth, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hi, Sunset Cabin. Miss Carol says it's creating the urge to sing. <laughs> That's right. Hi, Carla. Aren't they adorable? I'm telling you. Yes, so let me show you one more time. Let me show you again. Remember, this is only one layer that you are seeing here, okay? This is one layer. So here is the little, here's the choir. The quartet is back here. Okay, so we have the quartet back here. Then we have the choir. Okay, part, part of the choir. Then if you peek under here, you see peek under there? There's another whole layer of choir singers under there. Yes. Absolutely adorable. Adorable. So I just wanted to make sure that I showed them while Ruth was here. I know. That's it. Debbie says that's her right in the middle. Okay, which one, Debbie? Just like right about here must be in the middle. <laughs> Debbie, Debbie is the one whose halo has slipped just a tad. <laughs> and you thought I didn't know, Debbie. You thought I didn't know. Yours is the one that the halo is just a little off center. Anyway, thank you again. And she wrote a really, really sweet letter with it. So, yeah, I just had to, I had to show that. I wanted to show you that. They're really doing, hi, Miss Allie, hi, Carol. In case I, if I call you out twice, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to, but I just sort of like, did I say that? Um, 
So Ruth said that the small heads are wooden beads, the large heads are small glass ornaments. It's a good thing you told said that because I thought they were all wooden beads. So that reminds me to be careful, more care carefuler. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, Debbie says, be, by the way, Barb, be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> and Ruth says, yeah, Debbie, they hit the floor during production. Yours was the one that broke. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you guys are funny. Okay. So I wanted to show you something else I got because many of you know. So again, thank you so much, Ruth. That was really, uh, I mean, I was... Like I said, there are not very many times I am totally speechless, but that, you did it. You did it. You got me totally speechless on that one. Most of you know that I write a lot, and so I wanted to show you this book that I got for Christmas also, and um, it's a really cool book. Many of you who are also, who also enjoy writing might have a book like this. I, you know, I, I've seen it a couple of times. I pointed it out. It was a subtle hint, okay? It was a very subtle hint to Claus Man one day when we were in a bookstore. And I said, I see this book. I'd really like to have this. <laughs> he went back like the next day and bought it, he said. Um, Uh-oh. Debbie's feeling a little challenge coming on. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes, it was a wonderful happy mail. It was wonderful really wonderful so um he went back and got this so the cool thing about this even if you're not a writer i want to tell you something okay this is where barb gets on her rant okay this is a rant i will tell you that up front if you have children grandchildren nieces nephews um special children in your life uh, special, you know, uh, siblings, younger siblings, because like some people have, you know, families that are really spread out or godchildren or whatever. The point is, if you have, if you don't live on an island, let's just put it that way. If you don't live on an island by yourself, you need to leave a legacy and you need to think about the, le you are going to leave a legacy for whomever is you know coming after you whether it's children grandchildren um i mean they can be adult children whatever you are going to leave a legacy so what is that legacy that you're going to leave them and i'm going to tell you from personal experience the things that mean the most to me that my mom and my dad left to me are the things that they wrote the letters they wrote the cards they wrote um you know, just jotting notes. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you. Now, again, I'm going to tell you. I'm a sap, so I might cry, but then that's okay. We're reminiscing. It's the end of the year. We can reminisce, can't we? So one day, I this was long after my mother was gone, and I had kept, I don't know, a coat or a jacket or something of hers, and I went and I put it on. I, You know how it is. Sometimes you can't put stuff on for a long time or really look at it. You know, you kind of have to walk away from all that stuff. Anyway, one day I was ready, and I went and put this jacket on, and I reached in the pocket of that jacket, and there was a grocery list that she had made out and stuck in her pocket, and I will tell you, I cried for the longest time seeing her handwriting and seeing, I mean, it was just stuff like toilet paper and, you know, bananas and whatever. It was like six or seven things, um, but you know what? I had to save that grocery list because it was her handwriting and it reminded me so much of things that that um of who she was and the significance that she played in my life okay so my mom did that for me guess what you're gonna do that for other people too so i want you to think in terms of what kind of legacy are you gonna leave even if you're not a big writer, this is such a great book because it's really short little things. They're like writing prompts, but they're little short things. Um, who is your favorite clothing designer and what article of clothing do you love uh, uh, love most by them? Okay, well, I don't wear designer clothing, okay? Clearly, no one, <laughs> no one designed this outfit. 
you know, but no one did. So I don't wear designer clothing and I can write about that, you know. <laughs> you know, so I didn't cry, but I made you guys cry. Sorry. Um, but think about the things that you are leaving for other people because it's, you got to do it. You know, you got to think about that. Scrapbooks do the same thing. I'm not a scrapbooker. You know, I have a whole trunk full of pictures. I'm sad to say that they're just in a trunk, but that's the way they are. I'm lucky to get some in a photograph album. I'm not a scrapbooker, but I am a writer. And so um, I have filled several dozen journals with just, you know, blathering stuff. And I, after, after, I want to say after Christmas is over, even though it's already over, our celebration for Christmas isn't over. It got delayed and our son's coming home and, and my granddaughter's coming home. So our celebration is delayed. And so after that's over with, I'll tell you some more about those kinds of things, okay? But I can't do that today because then I would just like, you know, do what I always do, which is direct the surprises because <laughs> I do that. One time, okay, this is true confession. One time I was, uh, I was so proud of myself. This was years and years ago and Claus Mann was really into Western wear. And so I had proudly gone and bought him a really nice outfit. You know, it was like this really cool. We had a great Western store here. And I got this like like um, dress coat and, you know, blazer type thing. And, you know, it was just I got this great outfit for him. I was so happy. And I wrote, I was writing a letter to a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. And I wrote in the letter everything I had gotten for him for Christmas. And then I wanted to make sure I'd said some other things in the letter that I wanted to make sure that I didn't overstep my bounds. And so I was asking a second opinion. So what do I do? I hand the letter to Claus Mann and I say, would you read this and make sure, <laughs> make sure that I didn't, um, you know, overstep my bounds or anything? Cause I don't want to say anything that would be, you know, unreasonable. <laughs> and so he got done reading it and he goes, by the way, thanks for all the Western clothes for Christmas. And I'm like, how did you know? Okay. That's even, even worse. I wrote it, then didn't, didn't even realize I'd written it in the letter. And, um, and so I took the whole thing back and got some, cause I described it in great detail. So I took the whole thing back and got something new. <laughs> yeah. It's like stupid. Hi, Ann. <laughs> yeah, totally, 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 you know, could not believe it. Anyway, yeah, back to the book, shall we? Um, so the point being that even if there's a prompt in something like this, and you don't have very many lines to write, and I like the fact that, that I'll just go through. Some, they give you a whole page. Some are just little, you know, bits and pieces. But I'm just going to go through and just take random things. And if there are some that I just positively am not going to write about, I will just, you know, paint over it, gesso over it, or I'll just, you know, put a different prompt just over the top. What life event made you feel really vulnerable? Have you ever wished upon a star? What did you wish for? Name three adjectives that best describe your temper. Uh, what or who was the cause of the angriest moment of your life? You know, those kinds of things. Uh, do you feel, how do you feel about superstitions? Do you have any? In what way are you a trendsetter in your social circle? Okay, let's just discuss that for a minute. I'm not a trendsetter anywhere, anyhow, anytime. So let's just clear that out. I'll be jessoing right over that one. What do you think a turtle would be like without its shell? You know, it's just all kinds of fun sorts of, of um, things. But the point is, if you can fill a whole book, 500 writing prompts, if you can fill this whole book, I know it's blurry, but you got the idea. If you can fill that book, and there are many of these kinds of books. There are list books. There's all kinds of stuff. This book, the way it's put together, it will lie flat, so it's easy to write in. But if you do this, I'm telling you, you will leave a legacy that... Uh, okay, here's another thing. 
Here's another thing. If nobody in your family wants it, they can give it to the Goodwill and somebody that's an art journal will go in there, you know, an art journal person will go in there and snap it up and tear it up and use it in their art journal. So it's a win-win all the way around. <laughs> right? Right. Hi, Monica. <clears throat> so, yeah, okay, everybody's congratulating Patty. I don't, I missed what, what the congratulations for. Um, hi, Azure Muse. Azure Muse, do I have that written down? No. Azure Muse, I forgot what your name is. You're going to have to remind me. <clears throat> so anyway, it, this the thing is, it's not an expensive book, and it's easy to work with. Um, yeah, so check it out. I found it, or Clausman got it for me at Barnes & Noble. There are other things. There's like 500 things to draw and all that kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that's going to sit down and draw. You know, if somebody says in a journal prompt, draw, you know, draw a mouse climbing a drain pipe or something, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm just flat not going to do that. That is not me. But writing, that's me. So anyway, just, just thought I would share that with you. Okay, let's get on to other things, shall we? All right, it is the end. If you don't know by now, it's the end of 2016. <laughs> hey, Dana, good to see you. Azure Muse is Diane. Okay, let me write that down. Thank you, Diane. I just try to keep a list so that I can tell it sticks, you know, until it sticks. Ah, thank you. Good, Patty. That's great. I just saw that. That's wonderful. Okay, so here is... Um... <laughs> G says, some of my journals I'll need to burn. Okay. I have to tell you that some of mine have already been that way. Yes, I've I have burned a few of mine. I've just got I since don't burn them. I just take black gesso and gesso over them. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As your muse says, I can I can call her whatever sticks. Well, yeah. Okay, let's go back to this. So, I have a plethora of these calendars uh, because I have a friend and her husband works for this company and every year they give out a whole bunch of calendars and she would always share them with a the group that I was in. They have since, sadly, I believe, have stopped giving these out. But anyway, I kept them all. And um, they have a really nice vinyl cover on them. And this one is from 2009, I think. But they're cool because they have tabs, you know, the sheets are tabs. The paper is a nice cardstock. It's not heavy or anything, but, you know, it's got stuff in it. You can see how busy, you know, some months were back in, in that point in time. Um, and so I thought, you know, we're just going to turn it into an art journal. I've had the plan to turn them into an art journal for a while, and I thought, well, we'll do that. So the only thing I've done... And we may do a page in this once a month or something because I thought it would be kind of fun to do. The only thing I've done to this very first page is I scraped some gesso on it just to kind of give it a little bit more thickness and, you know, stability or whatever. And if it falls apart, uh, if you know, no big loss, I'll figure out what to do with it. So we can either do it um, portrait style or we can do it landscape style. We may do it landscape because it fits on the screen. <laughs> there you go. Problem solved. All right. Um, yes, Allie, 2016 is almost over. Wake up. <laughs> so I thought what we would use today are some prompt cards. And I know I've shown these before, but I just thought I would show them one more time. We're not going to use them, <laughs> but I'm just going to show them to you. How's that? So we're not going to use these. We're going to use the ones I made up. But I wanted to show them to you anyway. These are the ones by Kyla Givehand, the Mixed Media Inspiration Deck. And I've shown these a number of times and used them a number of times. It's a lovely deck of prompt cards. I did not put um, links in the description yet. I will when it goes live on YouTube. The recording goes 
the recording goes up on YouTube. Um, anyway, these are from Kylie Give Hand, which is Giving Hands Creative. So that's what these are, and I keep a rubber band on them to keep the, because they're there are a lot of cards in there, and sometimes I want to, you know, pop the lid off. This is the Creative Whack Pack, and again, I've shown these, and I believe that these are still available too. This is not, these are not art prompt cards, but I love the illustrations on them. Whoops, well, I'm not going to worry about turning them around, but anyway, they're just, they're fun. The illustrations are fun. And, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with your creativity or business or whatever, you can take these and, um, and shuffle the deck and pull some cards. And sometimes it's enough to get you going again. So these are not really art prompt cards, but they're pretty. I've had these for years and years and years. I've probably had these 20, 25 years. Anyway, it's the Creative Whack Pack by Roger Van Oak. And then this is the most recent deck that I've shown you guys in the recent past. And this is by Karen Friedland. And these are the Art Sparks cards. And um, they have her art on the back of them. These don't have just a little one-liner like Kyla's have more like a one-line prompt on them. These have, have um, you know, a much more detailed suggestion for doing things. So. Anyway, I just thought I would show you those. And if all else fails, make your own. Right? Make your own. Hi, Yvonne. Um, so this is this is my deck of prompt cards that I made. That I did the box. This is just a plain box, and I altered it to look like it was tin. And uh, this is based on and a tin jewel uh, I think it was a candy box or something I'll show it to you sometime and I um, altered it with different kinds of paper and paint and stuff and but it's just a cardboard box so what's in here are my prompt cards that I did and these are done I did the the paper in big sheets and I did like three different sheets and let's see if I can find the ones to give you ideas there was this one and this one and this this style so let me see if I can find you a couple more it's so like that was that one we'll do and then like this is that one okay so you can kind of oops sorry I need to pay attention to what I'm doing don't I Okay, so you kind of got the idea. So there are three different sheets of paper. So I did big sheets of, I think this was just mixed media paper. It's not real heavy. And I did, you know, lots of color. and But I kept this color more pinks and yellows and stuff. This one was more oranges and greens and that sort of thing. And this one was all in the cool color tone, like the blues and purples and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, Ruth says, the pasta angels, for, for my information, protect them from humidity. Pasta and water are not good. That's true. <laughs> Thanks for that warning, because that's good. I'll probably put something in with them. And if you just came in and don't know what I'm talking about, you can rewind, you can scrub back, and you can see what I showed. You can go back, I think, 30 minutes um, in the live show. Debbie, bite your tongue. <laughs> So anyway, I did that, and then I cut them up into the same size cards. And then I, on the back side, I had been collecting prompts for a long time. And I just painted sections of the cards, different colors of, of paint, as I recall. It's been a while since I did them. And I'd been collecting prompts for a long time, and so... This is just this is just a wash of paint on the back and after it was dry then I took my big old list of prompts and then I just drew you know picked a card and wrote whatever it was from my prompt list. And that's how I came up with these. So I've got a pretty good selection of these cards and I like them because they're you know they're pretty. 
it's something that I did. I like the fact that I did them. And once you take something that like this that is so incredibly busy and you cut it into small sections, you know, then you end up with something that looks pretty cool. Where as the whole big sheet, it's like so busy it makes your eyes want to roll back in your head. So all right. Judith says those cards are an amazing legacy. Oh cool. Yeah. All right, so we're going to just like um, shuffle some cards here. Okay, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. All right, let me stick them in the box here. And um, so there we go. And we have the only thing I've done to the, and I also have. A little sheet that I don't know where I printed this off it was probably from somebody's website and it was different art journal prompts fill a blank page with shapes paint or color them in construct a journal page around the last time you traveled blah 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 so I don't know where this came from but anyway I just folded that up and stuck it in the box with the cards because that way if I make some more cards in the future I'll add that to them Okay, this is just paper, um, okay, which is it you want to know about the paper? This paper, um, Diane, is it this paper you want to know? This was the mixed media, Canson mixed media paper that I used in big sheets. That's what I'd used for this, so it's nothing special. If I were to do it again, I would work with 140 pound smooth watercolor paper because it would be sturdier. So that's what I would do. How many cards? Oh, well, we'll count them. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're kind of sticky. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so there's ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so there's twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 30, okay? So we got that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, pretty sure there's two here. Nine, ten. There's 40. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty-two. Fifty-two! So, but there are prompts, there are websites, different websites will have journaling prompts, and especially this time of year, so... Yeah, make yourself a deck of cards. It's easy to do. Easy to do. I don't, I, Roesta wants to know where I got the prompts. I just have collected them from different places for a long time. The other one, the, the paper down there, I don't know where I got that one. But if you Google art journal prompts, you're going to come up with lists of things that, that you can do. Um, you know, make your own cards. Okay, so let's draw a card and let's see what we get, okay? Grab some junk mail and use it as the background. Paint over it, all right? Grab some junk mail and use it as background. All right. So there's the card. I'll give you the pretty side. Let me go dig in my file. This is going to be one of those, those streams where you're going to have to, like, be a little patient, okay? So let me go get some... Uh, I'll let you look at the cards here 
and I'll go dig in my file just for a second. I'll be right back. It does help if your stuff is semi-organized or pretty well organized because then you can come up with stuff that um, you can put your hands on things pretty easily. Isn't that a cool one? Look at that. That is really cool. Okay, so these are envelopes that I've gotten in the mail and I save them because I really like... Um, I like the envelope, the window, and I also like the patterns on the paper. So that's what all of these are. So this is my junk mail stuff. All right, so let's um, work with some junk mail, shall we? And I'm gonna have to go get my glue brush here in a second. All right, so I had some of these that are already open in the file, so we're going to work with that. Okay. I'm just looking here. What? Okay, Debbie, I don't know what you're asking me. What happens if you pull for using for backgrounds at the end? I don't know what that, I don't know what you're asking me. Speak up, sister. <laughs> okay. Well, that's nice junk mail, too. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to, um, I'm just going to tear some pieces of different patterns of the junk mail. Okay, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do. Alright, so here's another one. So um, let's see what we can come up with. So I'm just going to pull, tear some different sizes and shapes. And I'm going to get rid of the red, or the red, oh, my brain. I'm going to get rid of the white parts and just to use the colored parts of the envelopes. Junk mail. Hi, Kathy. Glad to see you. And I get a plethora of these all the time, so it does not matter. Truly does not matter. If I'm not careful with them, right? Alright, so let's take this one. So these are envelopes that bills come in. Once you start looking at your um, junk mail, and like this is junk mail too, this is, this is like, um, we'll use some of this too. It's some kind of something that I was given instruction about, you know, and it was all kinds of languages. So we'll just use, use a piece of that as well. So once you start looking at your junk mail differently, um, it's pretty interesting the things that you can come up with. And I like unusual shapes, so that's why I'm just kind of tearing the edges. And doing this before I start gluing, just because my hands are going to get good and gluey, because you know that's how that goes. I've got two more here, so we'll... <clears throat> but isn't that a great envelope to... Um, window to use in your journals and stuff.
We'll save those in case <clears throat> in case they have a purpose later. Hello, Jean. Nice to see you. Musical scrapper. Okay, so we have a few <clears throat> pieces of junk mail. So let me get my glue brush, so I'll be right back. And some glue. So I'm going to use Collage Podge. And this is my old cruddy glue brush. And I'm going to get a little uh, container to put glue in. Hello, Fast Quilter. Welcome. Nice to see you in the chat. All right, so we've got some collage posh. You can use whatever you like. I like the collage posh or matte medium is great as well. And I have a piece of... I, I like to, to uh, put a piece of parchment paper. This is just kitchen stuff from the grocery store between pages. It just kind of helps keep from gluing stuff together. <coughs> <laughs> gluing your pages together. All right, let's get gluing. And we're just going to stick some things on here. I don't mind having some of the stuff from below, like the little calendar bits, peek out. So we're just going to leave some of that. The less you think about this kind of stuff, the better. You just want to stick things down. If you don't, if we don't have enough, we're gonna add some more. And after I've done a few of those, I'm gonna use a card, and I'm gonna squeegee them down. To make sure everything's getting good contact. And if you have a place like here that didn't get enough, just stick a little bit more on. It's not hard to do. Okay, so let's do some more. Let's do the rest of these envelope papers. And you know, the great part about working with art prompts is, or writing prompts for that matter, is if you don't like a prompt, you know, like I showed you in that, in the writing prompt book, if you don't like the prompt, just don't do it. You know, there's nothing that says just because it has, just because somebody prompted you doesn't mean that you have to do it, right? You are the boss of your stuff. Okay, so we've got that. So I'm going to squeegee those down. This is just a gift card, an old gift card. And this is not super great paper that I'm working on top of, so who knows how it's going to work out. I think it'll be fine. By the time I'm finished adding stuff on top of it. I think it'll thicken up and be just fine. Okay, so let's go back and fill in some gaps here and there.
you can let them overlap. You can let stuff stick off the edges. Totally depends on what you like to do, right? It is yours. There is, I, I don't care what people say. And I have had a couple of people, you know, respond about some of the art journaling things I've done. Not very often, but I've had a couple people say, well, art journaling is this, and art journaling is that. And it's like, you know what? Art journaling is whatever you want it to be. Um, the art journaling police need to find a new profession. <laughs> okay, let's use some of this stuff. And we'll put, because I do enjoy having text, and since I can't read it, it makes it even better. So we're just going to put some of this here and there. And you will get glue all over your hands. It's a really good idea when you're doing stuff like this to put invisible gloves or some kind of skin protectant on your, your hands. <clears throat> because it will then release the glue and stuff from your skin a lot better. But I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to seek perfection here because it's not about perfection, especially when you're doing it on a stream like this. For me, it's all about, yeah, let's just do this. And, you know, I can talk to you guys and we can play around and we can see what happens and, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's all right. Like I said, if some of the underneath stuff shows through, I'm just using up the papers that I have. that I uh, tore into pieces, so we'll just add those here and there. And we got one more piece, and I think we'll just stick it over here in the corner. And I'm going to put it upside down so I'm not tempted to try to read it. And then I'm going to squeegee those pieces down, and if things are not sticking, just lift up the corner and squeegee it, put a little more glue on and scrape them down, right? That way you pull out the excess glue and so forth. Now, just to give, make sure everything is sticking down, I'm going to get one final coat of collage podge over the whole thing. By the time this, and you can see this ink on these uh, text papers is trying to run on me. So, well, that's just a little added bonus, isn't it now, you know? And some of this glue is probably going to go right down through those holes and go on to the next page, but, you know, we'll I'll deal with that later. It's about this page. This page wants all the attention now, and that's what we're going to give it. So, conveniently, I got the exact right amount of collage podge out, which there must be something going on in the universe because that never in my entire life of art has ever happened. It's like peanut butter and jelly or um, toast and butter. You know, you think you got the right amount, but you didn't, so you'll have to get a little more bread or you have to get a little more butter or whatever, and yeah. I don't know. The stars must have lined up on that one. I don't know what happened. That's never happened to me before. Ever. Okay, I need a uh, baby wipe. Try and get some of this glue off my hands. So, now, while I'm doing that, I can check it. catch up on the chat. Hi, Josie. We got a couple Josies here today. Great. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So, I'm just cleaning up my... Um, non-stick, my semi-non-stick mat <laughs> that I keep complaining about, but I don't want to, I don't, you know, it costs enough that I don't want to just jerk it off the table and put a new one down yet when it's still, it still works fairly well here. So what I'm using is baby wipes. Um, 
in a box and I use those to you know clean up the table and clean up my hands a little bit by the time this is over with my hands will be who knows what color and in what shape they will appear but you know I was dyeing fabric yesterday and I started out with gloves on and then I finally scrapped the gloves and I ended up I don't know that you can see it now but I had a lot I had very very purple hands <laughs> for a while okay let's dry this puppy shall we all right, we're going to dry this up. This is what I used to just collage posh. That's what I used. Collage posh matte. I like matte. The invisible gloves. Um, this is the gloves in a bottle. This is the one that I like. I got this at a quilting store. Um, after this is over with, I will put a link in the description box below. You can find them a number of places, but if you have a local quilt shop, you can, most of the time you'll find them there. The nice thing about that particular brand is that you can put it on your hands and it will absorb into your skin enough that you're not going to leave greasy marks and stuff on fabric and therefore it works with paper too so there's lots of different brands though you can check in art departments of your local store you can check in hardware stores there's lots of places and there are lots of different brands hi Tara or Tara yeah, Tracy Bautista is a stitch, isn't she? In fact, in fact, these these cards that I did, this is from a Tracy Bautista class that was in Lifebook. I'm glad you reminded me of that. Now, because we're not working with because we're not working with, you know, paper that's meant for this, the paper's going to warp and, and do all kinds of stuff, and that's okay with me. So, but if you're not okay with that, you just have to know it up front. <laughs> Kathy says she gets her gloves in a bottle at her pharmacy counter. Oh, interesting. Hi, Ilona. Nice to see you. Tara says she's going to implement color collage papers and color book designs. Very good. As long as they're purple. Listen to you. Listen to you. <laughs> Root. <laughs> and there is a difference. There is a difference between um, a lotion like this, which is a shielding lotion, and a protectant kind of lotion that is a skin barrier so you have to know that I'm using the shielding lotion so that doesn't mean a shielding lotion does not mean that it's going to to stop the the substance the chemicals from penetrating your skin it just means that it's easier for them to come off your skin if you are really sensitive to chemicals then you probably want to go with something that is a um, skin barrier that's a different thing like I don't paint with my hands very often some people do and people who paint with their hands have to be really careful about putting the pigments, you know, putting their hands into the pigments because some of the pigments that are found in paints are um, a little hard on, can be hard on the system, your physical system, because it can, the skin is your largest organ, organ of your body and so things can penetrate your skin and can make you really sick, so be careful, yeah. Okay, it's not completely dry. It's not 100% dry, but it's, you know, it's somewhat dry. And you can see the paper is nice and wrinkly. 
and I kind of like that. I'm good with that. Okay, let's draw another card. Next card. Use three colors that are adjacent on the color wheel and use a complementary color as an accent. Oh, well, that just ties right in with what we were doing last time. Well, that's cool. All right, let me get rid of the junk mail here. And I'm going to pull my, uh, I'm going to pull out my color wheel or a color wheel so we can talk about that a minute. How's that? Working out very well today. Working out very well. Let me kill this one light. Might not wash everything out quite so much. Okay, and so we're going to do three colors on the color wheel. Okay, so let's get a color wheel here. And um, Sarah said, thanks, Barb. I'm not sure what she was thanking me for. But you're welcome. <laughs> ah, anyway, okay. Hi, Rhonda. Nice to see you from down under. Welcome. So nice to have you guys here today. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so here's a color wheel. There are a billion, jillion different color wheels out there, you know, and this one has got all kinds of little things that will flip and turn, but we're just only going to work with the outside ring. And I also grabbed my journal here that the, one of my art journals. This was one I made, and this was from Creating Art at the Speed of Life, because I even left the note in here. This is by Pam Carricker, and this was from one of the book club. Um, I always have all my journals close at hand, and this one, this one has lots of blank pages, lots and lots of blank pages left, and this was done. I created this with watercolor paper on this one. So this was working through exercises from Pam Carricker's book. And so one of the first things she had us do in that book was to create a color wheel. And if you'll notice down here, I don't know if you can see that, but it says, oops, because I put these two colors in the wrong order. But, you know, hey, it's it makes it my color wheel, you know, makes it mine. <laughs> I'll flip through this just real quickly. But these are all, so this is about color, analogous colors. This is monochromatic. These were um, complementary colors. So on opposite sides of the color wheel. We'll talk more about that in a minute. This was about different kinds of texture, visual texture. Um, this was, I don't know what it was. Anyway, doesn't matter because I don't remember. It has information, but I don't remember. Uh, these, yeah, I'm not going to go through what they are because it's been a while since I've done them. But just to show you, so these are, if you really want to learn something, go through a book and do the exercises in the book, and you're going to pick up all different kinds of um, new techniques, especially if you take the time to, if you're using an art journal as a learning kind of thing, then take time to put notes in so you know what it was you did and what you learned and what you liked and what you didn't like and so forth. And as you can see, I got over here. This is all filled out. Then I got over here and I didn't fill this out and I would not have a clue now what the purpose of this was. I'll have to go back to the, um, to the book and see if I can even figure it out. And that's where I stopped. But anyway, oh, there's a note. Words provide food for the mind and create light for the uh, for understanding. Books are portable magic. Be awesome. Be a book nut. So obviously those are quotes I wanted to include in there. But anyway, the point of this is, of this whole thing, is to show you that if you make your own color wheel, it's a good idea. But it is nice if you get the colors in the right order, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, the name of the book is Creating Art at the Speed of Life. Hang on and I'll get it for you. Pam Carricker has, uh, these are the two books of hers that I have. I know she has other books out. These are the two that I have. The first one is called Art at the Speed of Life. The second one is called Creating Art at the Speed of Life. I have no earthly idea why she would name two books the same thing with only one word different. I have no idea. This was the first one. This was the second one. So the exercises that I have in here came from this one. So that's that. Okay, so back to the prompt, which was to use three colors that are adjacent on the color wheel. All right. And use a complementary colors and accent. Okay, so what you do is you take a color wheel and we'll work with this one because this one I've had forever. This is by the Grumbacher Company. I got this back when I was oil painting a really long time ago. So you're going to take colors that are adjacent to each other, which means next to on the color wheel. So um, because I haven't used these in a really long time, I have a, some colors of distress paint. So let's see what we have in the way of colors that are adjacent on the color wheel. So this is um, Seedless Preserved, so that's pretty close to this red violet. And then maybe we'll, we'll go this, kind of this direction. So we'll do that and then we can, we can use um, maybe Blueprint Sketch, because like purples and blues are next to each other. And then let's do one more, which will be um, a green, so maybe we'll use mowed lawn, because I think that might be the only other, or we could use chipped sapphire. It's a purpley green, purpley blue. Maybe we'll use those three. Okay, let's do that. Or we could do this. Oh, see, this is problematic for me. Let's do that, because it's a contrast in color. Okay. All right. So we've got colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, the purples and blues, so... Good enough. Yeah, the distress paints. Um, I really, I really like them. Um, a little pricey, but they have some unique properties, and I like that. Um, I like that. So I'm just trimming up the crud off the edges of my pages. I know some people like that. Um, if it's sticking off the edge, you know, pretty much I'm going to whack it off. Whack a mole. I don't know why I uh, don't like stuff hanging off the pages, but I really don't. So sometimes you just have to not fight things. You just have to go, you know, that's just, I know that about me. And you just have to go with it. See, doesn't that look better? It's all neat and tidy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Okay, so we have that. Three colors adjacent on the color wheel. All right. So I have a container. As cruddy as it is, it is relatively clean. I'm going to put some water in it. The flip is now back, so one dollar cheaper. Um, I, I've lost the train here. <laughs> they are acrylics, but they have some unique properties, and they do have a mixing ball in them. You hear that? So you want to mix them up. So you want to shake them really well. And they do have a, they don't come packaged this way anymore. Now they come packaged with, with a flip top. Uh, this is a dauber top. And sometimes my dauber tops are a little stopped up. 
But this looks like it's like it might work. So I'm just going to stick some paint on there. And the paint seems to take a little longer to dry. Uh, that's one of its properties. It doesn't dry quite as quickly as a lot of other paints. So I'm just going to, with a damp brush, I'm just going to kind of mix them around here a little bit. Uh, they do, they, they are multi-surface paints. I believe they work on glass and metal and all kinds of things. Okay, so let's do some blueprint sketch. Hi, Karen. Welcome. It's your first time being here? That's great. We're glad you came. That's super. Okay, so I'm just putting, this is a pretty intense color. So just adding some blueprint sketch. If you do have the ones with the dauber tops, you want to make sure that you keep the lid on so that that sponge doesn't dry out. This is a strong color. Strong color. Shouldn't have used quite that much. We'll go back and add some more. While we got this on here, where we've got so much, we'll go back and add some more color on it. I'm going to dry this just a little bit. Then I'm going to, even though the prompt didn't tell us to do this, I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm going to pull out a stencil, so give me just a second. This is a stencil by... Um, Seth After with Stencil Girl products. I've never used it before, so let's use it, shall we? And I'm going to use a baby wipe. Um, and this says past, present, future, so that seems like that would be appropriate this time of year. And I'm just going to pull some of that paint up through the stencil and remove it. Just to um, kind of break up some of that intense paint because we got a lot of that color going on. That is a strong color. <coughs> okay, so we've got some of that happening, so that's good. That gets breaks up some of that. So let's dry this a little bit more, then we'll add the last color. And you'll notice that I use a couple of different heat sources. One dries with a lot of force. It's an embossing gun, embossing heat gun. It dries with a lot of uh, a lot of force. And the other one is 
is from Ranger and it has heat, but um, not the force of the air. So, okay, this color is Salty Ocean. So we'll see, will it work? No, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna get some out of the bottle. I think that's one of the reasons that Ranger changed these lids to the flip top lids um, because those dauber tops tend to want to clog up. So just a little bit here and there. So we use so we do what the prompt says, right? And I'm just painting out of the bottle. But isn't it fun to see how the all that mishmash of papers in the background begins to recede? But you can still see it a little bit, you know? A lot of art journaling for me is about playing. Playing with color, playing with products, playing with ideas. Playing with words, because I play with words a lot. All right, now I'm going to go back and put some of the purple back. And again, I'm going to just paint out of the bottle. So just adding a, uh, just seeing if we can get paint all around here and there. We'll do a little bit more stenciling here in a second. Then even if the colors are wet, these are going to blend together and you're going to be, you know, you're going to be in good shape. Okay, so we're going to call that. It's a mess, but it's good. It's all good. So let me heat that just a little bit more, and then we'll use another stencil and pull some more stuff off. looking for a name on this stencil to tell you and um, I'm not it is s214 it's a Seth after stencil from stencil girl products I like faces and words and so I'm going to use this face stencil this is a Dina Wakely face stencil and the name of it is moon faces moon faces all right, so let's see if we can maybe. See if we can get any of the face to show up. Might or might not, you know. A little bit, kind of a ghostly look there.
And if your if your baby wipes are too juicy, um, this can be kind of a problem. These are a little bit on the wet side. Didn't get much on that one, except suds from the baby wipe. So sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on how dry the paint is. And sometimes you, if it's too wet, it doesn't come off right. If it's too dry, it doesn't come off right. So, yeah, well, that didn't work so well. So, yeah, oh, well, moving on. All right, let's see what the next prompt is. Cause Oh, we didn't do the, the um, complementary color. So let's go back to the color wheel a second. All right, so here is what we used. We used this side of the color wheel. So complementary means right straight across the color wheel. So if we can't take this section and we go across here, it's going to be in the yellow or orange range. So let's see what we can do. In the yellow and the orange, I have, um, I have spice marmalade and I have mustard seed. So I think we're going to go with um, mustard seed. So Kathy says if you use Lysol or Clorox wipes, it takes it off really well. Good idea. All right, let's put a smidgen, and we do mean a smidgen, of this here and there because this is a complementary color. In fact, let's... Let's do this. Let's take a little bit of a makeup sponge and I'm going to put a little bit of this paint on my mat. And let's see if we can put the face on there this way, shall we? We'll just let a little bit of it peek. A little bit of it peek. Okay, so we got a little bit of the complementary color peeking up there. All right, so we've got a face. Um, let's use, here's another Seth After stencil. We'll use that one. I've never used it either. I'm proud of myself I'm actually using them. So let's use a little bit more of this. And we'll just stick it up here. Secret. Okay. And then let's use a little bit more. And then maybe a smidge more down here. Okay, so this particular stencil is S215. Seth Apter, this one also is from uh, Stencil Girl Products. Now, while this has got paint on it, let's just flip this over and let's just clean it off on the paper is what she meant to do, not on the parchment paper. And that'll at least clean off some of it. And then let's see if the face wants to clean off anymore. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Now, 
I've got plenty of distress paint here on my mat. So I'm going to just pick it up. Scoop up what I can scoop up. Then we'll just add the rest of it on this page just so we don't completely waste it, right? Good enough. So we got our three colors and then our complementary color, accent color, and a little bit here and there. Because that's what the prompt said to do, so who are we to argue? And let's dry this. Okay, we got that. Let's see what's next, because we got those done. So pull in the next card. It says, <clears throat> paint hot pink circles. All right. digging for paint. Okay, that's about as hot pink as you can get. So we're going to go for hot pink circles. Annette. Hi, Linda. And anybody I didn't say hello to, I'm so glad you've joined us. Thanks for being here. And is it Adeline? Welcome. Okay, this time I'm going to use a palette. Um, this is palette paper. Pat, and I'm just going to put out some hot pink, fluorescent pink. This is Dela Rowney System 3 fluorescent pink, in case you want to know. And I'm going to use a little bit of water to thin the paint a little bit. You can thin your paint with a variety of things. Water's easy. I'm fine with using water, so that's what I'm going to use. We're just using some prompts, um, some prompt cards that I made up a long time ago, and so we're using those to just kind of mess around with an art journal page. Okay, so I've thinned this just a little bit with a round brush. All right, so let's do some hot pink. Circles. Here and there. All right, we've got hot pink circles. 
and I'm just going back and connecting a few of them. And letting some of them run off the, the page. The fluorescent colors, the hot pink fluorescent colors like this, tend not to uh, show up too, they're not, they uh, tend to be really quite transparent. So as they dry, um, they will kind of they kind of go back into the page a little bit, but it adds another layer, which is fun. Okay, so we have a lot of hot fluorescent color here, so I'm going to set this aside just for a second. And pull out a different art journal, and we'll use up the paint. So this is kind of one of those places where I just um, scrape off the excess paint and so forth. And it builds layers on pages and so forth, so it's, it's a fun thing to do. And a good way to use up your paint. Because after all, it all costs money, and you might as well take advantage of using it, right? Besides that, you end up with things that you would never think to do on purpose by doing this. Okay, so we'll set that off. Go back to what we're working on. And let's dry it. Bye, Debbie. Happy New Year to you. Okay, so drawing the next card, it's a stamp a pattern. So kind of keeping with the circle theme, I've got some circles here, some circle stamps. So let's use that one. And let's go back to the palette and we need some white paint because the page has gotten really dark. So let's use some white. This is just plain, this is artist, uh, master's touch acrylic paint in white and I'm just going to kind of spread this out on my palette here to make kind of like a stamp pad using the acrylic ink acrylic paint sorry <laughs> my mouth and my brain are not synced up today all right so to make a pattern let's see what we can do here Okay, so let's go uh, kind of so 
So we'll just do a pattern and let's do it a little bit around the edge here. And then maybe we'll do a little bit over here. Good enough. Looks like a pattern to me. Looks good enough to me. All right. Now, when you've got paint on a rubber stamp, you need to get it off ASAP because it will ruin your stamps. Acrylic paint will. So we're going to take it off and you really need to take this to the sink and use a soft toothbrush and run it under the water and clean it off. I'm going to see if I can get it off here so I don't have to stop and go do that. Clean enough for me. Okay. So we have a pattern. <clears throat> Bye, Dana. Happy New Year to you. All right, here we go with the heat gun again. Let's dry this up. Okay, that paint's going to be a little wet for a little bit, but we're just going to work with it. All right, next prompt. Let's pull another one. Draw a huge heart on the page. Fill the heart with things that make your heart happy. All right, we're going to make a huge heart. What color do you think we should make this heart with? I'm going to let you guys pick it. How's that? Hi, uh, is it Hova Art? Hova? Hova? Yeah, I love the the uh, tabs at the bottom. It's pretty fun. What color do you think we should do the heart with? I'll let you guys pick it. Bright, bright red, says Kathy. Orange, red. Red, orange. We got red, orange, and pink. Lilac, pink. Pink, please. Hi, Jessica. Orange, red, orange, pink. Sounds like Hofa fart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hofa. How about is Hofa? Is that what would that be it? <clears throat> or Hofa fart. Where are you from? Sky blue pink. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. Okay. The first ones that were um, chatting were in the yellow and orange, right? No, red and orange. Red and orange. Red and orange. Well, let's see. What color do we have over here in my Distress Paints? And we're just going to use the palette. Let's see. I'm looking to see what I got here. I have fired brick, but that's really not super, super red. Um, let's go, let me get a different red here. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, so let's use a red. Now we need a very big heart. That's what the prompt says. Okay, so we're going to do a very big heart. So this is acrylic paint from a tube, and this happens to be Master's Touch, and it is actually called magenta, but this is not what I call magenta. To me, this is red. All right, so I'm just watering the paint down a little bit. So let's um, kind of do this heart here. All right, so we have a nice big red heart. And I can assure you, if I were doing this art journal page by myself, I would not think to do that. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna take some of this white paint that's still over here and I'm going to make myself a little space. Over here where I may actually um, glue some paper on it, but I just want to kind of give myself a space. Because I'm going to want to write on this, so I probably will glue paper over the top of this. But for now, I just want to remind myself that I want a space to write in, to talk, to process this whole thing. So I'm going to do that, just to remind myself. We may stick some paper on it here in a second. Bye, Jessica. Thanks for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Another thing we could do to this to make this show up even a little bit more, let's go back to a little bit of that white paint. And I'm going to pick up some of this white paint. If I don't have to get some more, I'll be surprised. And then I'm just kind of blending this out. Just so we can make it show up a little bit more. So we're going to highlight our heart just a little bit more. And this is just where you play.
Okay, so we've kind of blocked out some of the background. Okay, blocked out some of that background. And let's heat it up again just a little bit. And before I go, <clears throat> before I go too much further, I'm going to take a piece of the security envelope, like we used in the very beginning. And we'll end up gluing that there just to show you kind of what my thought process is on that. So I'll put that there and then I can do some writing on it. Okay, so you guys can help me here. Um, we'll find see if we can find something that's going to write on this acrylic paint. We'll try this uh, white pen. Uh, fill the heart with things that make your heart happy. So what things make your heart happy? Let's fill this heart. We'll see if we can get this pen to write on it. Acrylic paint can be a real bugaboo sometimes. What makes your heart happy? I'm going to wait for you guys to tell me, and we'll do it together. We'll fill it in. One of the things that makes my heart happy, I'll start, is my family. My stream audience. Okay, what else? Books. Grandchildren. Okay. The hubs. Being creative. Okay, now if I miss some, you guys are going to have to put them back in again. Um, rainy days. I like rainy days, too. Okay, nature. The sponsors, how could we not have them on here? You hear that? Chance is talking in the background. Animal friends. And if you mess up the word, you just keep going. <laughs> angels, purple angels, exactly, Ruth. Um, art, yes. Friends, yep, friends are good. That's very good, friends. Ugly woman, nope. <laughs> fibs in case you guys don't know what fibs are they are friends in the box
The ugly woman is not making the grade. No, no, you cannot make me write the ugly woman on here. Color. Sunsets. Absolutely. Sunsets are amazing. I'm trying to keep my hand out of everything that's wet. Did we write the beach on here? I don't know if we did or not. Somebody said beach. I'm not sure I wrote it. If I did, it'll be on here twice. Um, hugs. Yep. Love. Highland appears. The ugly woman is back. No, she's not. <laughs> Hot showers. That's a good one. The forest. That's great. You guys are coming up with some great ones. Yeah, I have a, a big giant tree I go visit every once in a while. I haven't been there for a while. Sunday naps. How about just naps in general? Naps are good, right, Jean? Jean, are you awake? Kisses. Did I put hugs on here? Did I get that? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's on here more than once. Ooh, bird songs and music. Yeah. Bird songs. I'm going to put wind chimes because I love the wind chimes. Always makes me feel good when I hear the wind chimes. Puppy breath. Isn't that the truth? Little puppy breath. There's nothing like a little puppy breath. T, yeah, T. How about coffee? Coffee is good too, right? Even though I don't drink much of it anymore, I still like it. Yeah, the ugly woman never left. It's so true. Oh, chocolate. Yeah, chocolate is good. Okay, let's write chocolate up here. People said chocolate before, too? Okay, good. I know I'm missing stuff because I'm writing and then the chat's going. We got room for a few more. Anything else make your heart happy? What colors make your heart happy? Ice cream. What colors make your heart happy? We got sunsets. I did get that one. Yep. Mountains make my heart happy. Bubble baths. Paint. Paint. <clears throat> Yellow. Sunrise, laughter, travel. Is yellow the only color that makes your, <clears throat> your heart happy? We'll put rainbows out here. Bye, Yvonne. Happy, happy New Year to you. Travel. Cook. 
colors that make my heart happy are red, purple, turquoise, minus E, get the spell for a minute. <clears throat> Kindness. Chartreuse, what a great color. T R E U S E. Spelling errors are accepted on this page. Teal and purple. I got I got turquoise. We'll put teal. That's a little different color. White. Okay, we got room for some more. Orange. Bye, Susan. Happy New Year. Fuchsia. F U S C A. F U S C I A. Is that how you spell it? Good enough for me. Flowers. Yes. Flowers. Got rainbows. Rainbows are on here right there. Got that. Raw umber. Polka dots. That's a great one. Polka dots. Magenta. Got room for a few more. Glitter. Nope. <laughs> Aubergine. Oh my gosh. That's in the purpley family, right? Snowflakes. Okay, snowflakes. We can put that one in here. Christmas. We'll just write snow down here. Snow in general. Okay. Emerald. Okay, we got room for one more color. Oh, butterflies. Oh, how could I forget butterflies? We'll write butterflies right here. Amethyst. All right, Ruth, you get it. Amethyst. A M E T H Y S T. Okay. All right. Now, you guys, we're going to stop there. So I'm not watching the chat anymore because I'll feel bad if I didn't write your thing down. <laughs> Here's what I have to say about this page. If you can do something like this and not feel better, after you're done, I will be shocked. So if you're having a bad day, or you're having a bad time of it, or you're feeling lonely, or you're feeling um, down in the dumps, you know, for whatever reason, do a page like this. Is this going to win any awards for beauty? No. Is it going to win any art contest? Absolutely not. Are you going to feel better after you get finished doing it? You bet you are. And then after that, then you can doodle on it just like this. So I'm just using a black jelly roll pen and I'm just doodling because black always makes things better. Black makes the other colors sing and pop. 
so it's always good to put some black on the page and if you want to put little scallops on it like this then you can come back with little tiny dots around all the scallops and it will look like it's lace and I particularly like how that looks myself so I can piddle with this for a really long time adding things to it and doodling and writing because I will go back and write about the experience that we had today doing this you know that it was a collective effort with lots of people participating and we had over a hundred people in the chat that um, were kindly helping and making suggestions and having a good time talking to each other. Do you see just by adding that little um, stuff around there, the, adding the lace, the scallop, and the little dots, you have it add a little lacy edge. Then you could come in here. and add some detail in here. And so forth. So you can just play with it until as long as you want. You can even come in out here and you could add add other things around the heart if you want to on the outside. So there's all kinds of things you can do to continue playing with that. And then pretty much it's a given for me that I'm going to use an ink pad and I'm going to come around the edge. I like the way that that tends to frame the page. You do want to make sure that the acrylic paint is dry when you do this, however, because acrylic paint can really mess with your ink pads. And when you get all finished with it, because I've used some artist grade paints on here, or student grade, rather more than artist grade paints, student grade paints, but they tend to have some, some um, more of a gloss quality. This may stick. So if and when it is 100% dry, you may need to wax your page with something, and sometimes I'll use the micro glaze. You, want, you do want to check this, however, in a, an inconspicuous place to make sure that this isn't going to take your, your pen off, your ink from the ink pen. You want to make sure that, this, that whatever you're using to put on top of it is not going to take your... Because uh, sometimes stuff will dissolve the Jelly Roll pens or any other kind of ballpoint ink, so it might actually dissolve that. So you have to try it in a spot. Um, you could always spray it with a matte finish, and I do that frequently as well. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is right down here, even though it is not completely finished yet, the one of the things that you want to do, and I'm going to move this up a little bit so I have a little bit of room here. This is December 30th, 2016 stream live stream and I'm going to put my initials down there so that I have a record of that when it was what it was for and so forth yeah okay so what do you think so we did these are the prompts that we used I kept them out kept them in order so we did grab some junk mail and use it as the background paint over it we used to paint over it. We used three colors that were adjacent on the color wheel and used a complementary color as an accent. So we did some yellow. The cool colors were our main focus. We painted hot pink circles, which are back there, but you can hardly see them now. We stamped a pattern around the outside edge. So we did that. And then we drew a huge heart on the page and filled the heart with things that made our collective hearts happy. Not bad not bad that makes me feel good how about you does that make you feel good <sighs> and this is part of the art journal practice 
you know, you practice with it. People use art journals for all kinds of different purposes. But I like doing a collective page like this. And we may do that again. Because um, as, as we know, this has lots of pages in it. At least 12. So we may do more of that. Would you guys like to do that? Would you like to do more collective pages together? Hi, Diana. You guys like that? Would you like to do more of that together as a collective? I think that's kind of fun. Let me get rid of the water, the illegal fluids. Let me get this off the table so we can let the sponsors come out. And as usual, my art space is a complete wreck when I'm done doing this. <laughs> uh, Michelle says she's working, but she couldn't resist participating. Thank you. Hi, Gail. You like it? Pin says she likes it. Hi, Pin. Okay, well, we'll do that. Hi, Flyover Pilgrim Rebecca. Okay, that's great. Chance is always ready. Yes, he is. All right, let me get the let me get the sponsor cam set up here. Yeah, let's get the sponsor cam. Yes, you ready for your close up? Are you ready for your close up? Okay, lie yourself down. Lie yourself down. Yeah, Charlie's coming up too. I'm just trying to make enough room here. Lie down, buddy. No, I didn't fix my didn't fix my tripod after last week where where you mess it up. All right, come on. Come on. Okay. Whew. It's work, folks. It's work having sponsors. Lie down, bud. Lie down. They want to see your face, not your belly and stuff like that. Here we go. Here we go. All right, sponsor time work oh my goodness it's work it's work having sponsors isn't it it's work having you guys yes this is chance back here in the background this is charlie who's hogging the spotlight today turn the camera a little bit so you can see a little bit more i'm sorry about having to watch the monitors in the back but yeah that's the way it is <laughs> oops here he comes all right yes thank you same to you rowesta hi marty <laughs> thanks cat well thanks everybody for uh you know it was not what we call a fancy page but it's an effective page and it's uh it makes you stretch when you do things like this when you do pages like that with where you're pulling prompts out like that it makes you stretch and that's good that's a good thing all right chance is usually the com camera hog he usually is charlie's gonna take the spotlight today yeah Charlie's going to take the spotlight today. All right. I will see you next week. I'll see you next year. Yeah, I will see you next year. And um, as far as I know, I will be here next week. That is the plan at this point. Our son is coming home. But uh, who knows? Maybe we can get him to stream with me. Maybe we can get him to do an art journal page. Now that would be fun. <laughs> Unless he has something in mind where he is working on computers or whatever and if that is the case because he comes in and does the maintenance periodically like once a year so if he's here and we have to do some some stuff on the computer and we can't um i can't stream for some reason i will send it out send the message out over twitter and on facebook all right i will see you guys next year aka next friday 2 p.m eastern and in case I didn't tell you, which I don't think I did, my name is Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com, and you are all invited to come over and check out HowToGetCreative.com, which is a membership website. And we are gearing up for Season 4, so it is just about to get crack a lacking. All right, I will see you guys next Friday, I hope. Your tail is deadly, buddy. Your tail is deadly. All right, see you guys next week. Bye for now. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.